Hey everyone, and welcome to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben, and this is part two, so let's get started. In this video, we're going to look at five different ways to view the exit data and metadata of photos and videos. This really goes in conjunction with the first video that we looked at, which was about doing image reverse searches, which really builds towards the information that we have of a video or a, or a photo to answer those questions of who, what, where, and when. By looking at the exit data and metadata of, of images, we can start to see hidden information and, and fingerprints that may have been left behind to answer some of those questions as well. To go into the first technique, I'm currently using a Mac and so it's very simple just by clicking the tools option and going through the inspector to view the metadata of these photos. You can do the same thing on a Microsoft just by having a look at the file, right clicking and viewing all of the properties that are attached to that photo as well. In this image, because it was received over social media, the metadata would have been wiped while being uploaded and a lot of platforms do that these days. So there isn't any metadata uh, visible there. However, another image that I have does have metadata attached to it. So if we have a look through here and we can see that there is EXIF data, uh, there is also GPS data. So we can see exactly where that photo was taken and other things. And this really helps us a lot more because it shows uh, what type of phone might have taken it um, and things like that. But the GPS coordinates are, are one that is always quite, uh, quite useful in metadata and EXIF data. A website I sometimes use is Jeffrey's Image Metadata Viewer. It's a very simple website to use because you can either paste the URL of an image that's already on the internet or you can upload one of your own photos. So I'm going to upload one of these and you can view that image data and it'll give you a small screenshot of that photo and it will give you all of the attached metadata in there. That's really useful because we can paste a link in and see if there's any attached metadata to that link. We can also see the creator tools of that image we can see the date of the image and other things like that. That's a really simple way for someone to view the metadata of an image in the browser. If you want to find out any attached metadata of a YouTube video, you can do something similar, which is just by typing into Google YouTube metadata. And a really good website for that is the MattWIO YouTube Metadata Viewer. This is the site and all you have to do is paste the YouTube link in there and click submit and it will provide the metadata details such as statistics and also the geolocation for instance if there is any attached which are coordinates and it will provide a Google Maps indication as well as any other details that you might be interested in. So that's a really useful one for YouTube. Again, much like doing the image reverse search, we can also rely on the use of plugins just to make life a little bit easier. One plugin that I really enjoy using with EXIF data is EXIF Viewer Pro. And this allows us to easily view an image with its EXIF data while it's still online on a website rather than having to save it and either read it on our computer or read it on a third party website. So to show you an example, here's a nice little fishing website uh, where there's been some amazing photos taken of fish being caught. And we can, for instance, click one of these photos and the Exif Viewer plugin has a, a little pop-up or we can just right click and show Exif data. And that will provide us with the Exif data that is available. So for example, we can see that this was by taken by an iPhone 8. Um, we can also see the exact date that the photo was taken. And we can see a lot of other relevant details as well. Another technique to view Exif data on your computer without having to put the photo online is the Exif tool by Phil Harvey. This is a tool that you can download and run straight into the command line and it allows you to view the EXIF data of images without having to put them through third party websites or to have them online already. The option to right click and view properties or to go on a Mac through tools and have a look at the inspector option to see the metadata is quite useful. But this is just another way that you can view very detailed information. To get to this, all we have to do is type in EXIF tool on the command line followed by a space and we can simply drag our photo into that. Click enter and it will show me all of the attached EXIF data 
That's a lot more than we would have seen had we have just viewed this through the inspector as well. And so we can also see the, the GPS coordinates, altitude, latitude, longitude and position as well. So just a quick recap of the five methods that you can view the metadata and EXIF data that we just looked at in this session. So first of all, we have the option of going through tools and inspector to see the either GPS or EXIF data as well. And you can do the same thing on a Microsoft by right clicking and viewing properties. We also have the Jeffrey's image metadata viewer that you can just find by Googling that name. For YouTube videos, you can have a look at the YouTube metadata from mattw.io and that will show very interesting details such as status, geolocation and statistics. You can also use the Exif Viewer Pro plugin, which as we saw from an example here is pretty useful just with either the right click function or the fact that it just shows up with a little icon on the image there for you to view all of that metadata. And the last one for those comfortable using the command line is Exif Tool, where you can view much more detailed metadata, such as the GPS coordinates that we found before. Just a brief note on viewing metadata and Exif data is that it can be edited and has been in the past to attach different properties or maybe even to mask or mislead investigators or researchers to lead them to a wrong location or wrong name. So keep that in mind and make sure you always cross reference and double check this information. If you do have a name or a location, just keep that second guess in mind as to whether it's real or not and make sure you cross reference that with any other information you've gathered in your investigation or research. I hope you enjoyed this quick session. If you did, please let me know by giving the video a like and perhaps leaving a comment and don't forget to subscribe for more content.